Every Minute Counts. And today I'm super excited to have my guest, Angela Mancini, with me here today. She is the mom of four little boys, and she's been walking this path of getting organized and maintaining systems for roughly about seven or eight years. And I've known her for about that long, and I'm excited to have you here today. Thanks for coming on, Angela. Thank you so much, Jennifer. <laughs> So the reason why I wanted to have you um, have a conversation with us today is I know that so many moms, um, you know, when they're single or newly married, they feel like they're pretty organized. And what's the big deal? I mean, this whole system thing and organization thing is pretty easy. And every time you have a baby that you bring home, it just gets harder and harder because we have more stuff from each child that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, So you have four boys. What are their ages? They are 10, 9, 7, and 5. So, and I know for a fact that you're a busy mom. Yes, very busy. (laughs) And they bring a lot of stuff home. Yes. And we all know with boys, they like to have like lots of little trinkets and little treasures. treasures. (laughs) I only have one boy and I know that's like the story of his life. Oh, I have to keep this rock, mom. I found it in this beach or this park. So lots of, so you have all those treasures and trinkets times four. Yes. That's a lot. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so tell me about just how... From be- the beginning when you first started um, building your family, and was it easier? Did you feel like it was easier? You had more control then compared to the more kids that you had? Um, in a couple respects, yes, more control because there was less paperwork and schoolwork and all the stuff that comes along with what they bring home from school mm-hmm. and their friends and sports. But in in other regards, there was all of the baby stuff and clothes and uh, um, a lot of that stuff added up. The toys, it was like a bomb of toys went off all the time and I kind of felt overwhelmed with that. And also the gifts people would give when they're younger just adds up more and more. And now I'm to the point where even for gifts for Christmas, we're thinking about, you know, my parents and my in-laws have asked us and the kids, oh, what should we get them? And I'm more at a point and more apt to say to them, well, let's think about experiences to give them mm-hmm. instead of just a box of Legos, yeah. even though, you know, they still do like to do that occasionally. But I did feel o- more overwhelmed with the gifts as like when they were younger than I do now. Yeah. But the school, the school, the school is paper, a whole other story. Yeah. The school papers and everything is where, um, I feel a little more overwhelmed in that regard. Yeah. And it's so interesting because I do remember specifically the first couple of times we worked together, you did not want to part with any worksheets or anything (laughs) that those little hands made at school. (laughs) It just was going to break your heart to part with it. And I remember thinking as the years go on and you have to maintain that much stuff and for each son, it's going to be difficult. And you eventually did learn to let go, and now you keep your favorites, right? Yes, and I do realize that a worksheet is a worksheet. Yes, they wrote their name on the top of it, but they've, you know, filled out numbers or checked a box or done like a little word problem, but I can't hang on to that because that doesn't show their personality. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do want to remember how they wrote their name at that age, but I do have that in other ways, like through some special artwork and... um, they used to make these maps in preschool and I have my favorites of those that, that yeah. we kept. Yeah. But in terms of the schoolwork, I am more easy to get rid of as it comes home. Mm-hmm. And I just keep one little um, folder cubby for them during the year. And I keep everything important to me at that time in that. And then I go through at the end of the year and I do end up getting rid of most of that as well. Yeah. Because it's like, as the end of the year comes about, you're not as attached to it as you are that day when they walk in the door with their little face and they're so excited. Yeah. And then it's kind of hard to part with it right then and there. But by the end of the year, you're kind of like, okay, it is just a paper and you don't get busted as easily as if you throw it away that day. So we've all done that before. And then they're sad. Okay, I just made this and it's in the garbage. Oh, yeah. My oldest, Joshua, would be the most upset if he found anything of his in the garbage, whether it was a picture he drew or his name, anything. He would get so upset. And then I explained to him, I said, Joshua, if we kept every single paper from preschool on, we would have a whole room of papers mm-hmm. from you. Yeah. And so his eyes got really big and he... I think he saw the value in that and understood. 
But yeah. I do ask them now, my older kids, I've asked them like, is this important to you? What does this mean to you? Do we need to keep it? And why do we need to keep it? And sometimes they do have a valid reason for needing to keep it. Like it's an assignment due mm -hmm. or, um, it does reflect like something important to them at the time. But most of the time now they all are saying, mom, this, this is not important. You can get rid of it. Well, what I love that you said about that is really important for other moms to hear because you're teaching them in that moment when you're asking them for their opinion. So they're learning this, this skill of organization and they're also learning to part with things because I hear a lot of moms that they'll either they won't ask at all. So the child doesn't get a say or they ask and then the child's like, no, mom, I don't really want to keep that. I don't care about it. And they're like, but you made it. And it's so cute. <laughs> Are you sure? And every time I hear a mom saying that, I'm always like, Catch yourself because even if you can't part with it right now, don't teach that to your child because we don't want to raise kids that are so um, attached. attached to things of the world. We just don't. And it, they'll end up becoming overwhelmed with their stuff. So I think that's really cool. What's your? Do you have like a limit on what you save for them or what kind of storage you use for, for the stuff that you are saving? Um, I have a bin per child in the basement and I do, you know, Jennifer and I have talked about this, like clearing it out every year and just really going through and fine tuning it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have their picture on the front of each bin and so it's cute. Like it's in a closet and I feel like I do put, you know, important papers, schoolwork or like very special artwork. We've started to frame That's great. and I feel like that is special to them. And then they can see, you know, there's a couple in their grandparents' house right now that I'm like, okay, I want these back, <laughs> but they're so cute. I mean, they love that, that it's yeah. their artwork, that they accomplish something and then it's up on the wall. So, yeah. um, in regards to the storage though, key, I think one bin per child is reasonable because mm -hmm. when they're 18 and you don't want to be giving them 10 bins and say, Oh, here's your stuff from growing up. They don't want that. You think about yourself as at 18 years old, going off to college, or even when you get married and go off in the world. Like, I don't want all that junk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just like, really? No. So what my mom did even was I have a few pieces of artwork that were special to me. Um, and she framed them for me. And so I have those. That's nice. And that's really all I wanted was those couple pieces of artwork. But I didn't want a bin. I have a bin from childhood that I haven't gone through. And, <laughs> and then yep. my mother-in-law still has my husband's bins at her house and yeah. we don't want them. <laughs> Isn't that so true? I've seen so many people spend 30 years giving up storage space and energy and moving bins. And then they ask their child, their grown child, do they want it? And they're like, nope. no, no, <laughs> my and own stuff. Like, to think of yourself at 18 to 23. Do you want that bin of what you were doing in kindergarten? No. And the answer is usually no. No, no. So it's like when my mom asked me if I wanted my old dance costumes <laughs> <laughs> that have been in the basement for 30 years. I know. My no, mother-in-law did say, Oh, do you want all of Josh's trophies? Yeah. And, and I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> You know, so, isn't it sad, but we really don't need all that stuff and our kids won't need it either. So it's, there's no point stressing yourself out over keeping every single piece of paper that comes to the door because they're probably not going to want it anyways, but it's nice to give them one bin of memories that were really yeah. special. And this used to be a bigger struggle for me. I feel like if you, um, go day to day and accomplish it, like, even week to week and go through those papers from the week, it's much easier to handle at mm -hmm. the end of a school year even. So yeah. Yeah. I try to make a, a good effort to have a, have like a better handle on the papers. Yeah. And so tell, so two, each, um, out of the four boys, there's two bedrooms. So two boys in each bedroom. Yes. Um, I think is awesome because you've really narrowed down what they truly love and what they truly need in their bedrooms. Um, so they do have, you know, toys and stuff like that in there, but then they also share their closet. So tell us, you know, why does that work for you? And what do you think, you know, how did you get to a point where they could each, the two could share a bedroom? So the older two boys, they're nine and 10 and they've been about the same size since, were maybe two and three. And so, um, having their clothes together in one spot makes things a lot easier 
on my end. Um, and I know that's not the case for everybody. Not like two kids might not be in the same size, but even if they weren't in the same size, I think I would just section off one of the boys sections and the other, but they do share all their clothing space, their toy space. Um, their Legos are all together inside one closet and they're color coordinated. So if they're looking for a Lego, they're trying to build, like they use their imagination with a lot. So that's pretty easy for them to keep organized. And mm -hmm. I always tell my second son, um, Mateo, who's nine, when he's not putting his Legos back, I'm like, okay, let's go through our colors again mm -hmm. from preschool and let's see if you can put them back. And he's like, mom, I know my colors. So that way it makes him easy, it easy for him to put away his Legos. But the clothes really, um, you know, I separate it for them in terms of like, you know, dress pants, jeans, hang up all their shirts. Um, and it's easy, like, it's accessible for them to know how to do it, know how to put them away and find, and their bedrooms, they sleep in two separate beds, um, which works out nicely for them because they are a little older. And so it's been working and they share a bathroom too. So mm -hmm. that's been working well for them. Um, and I found that the less I had in their room was easier for them to manage. Yeah. Yeah. And the younger two boys, they have bunk beds in the room, although they, the two of them sleep in the bottom bunk together. I love that. <laughs> so cute. And I catch them like cuddling, Aww. you know, and, but I take lots of pictures. I know <laughs> <laughs> I do. And they also share clothes. They're, they're also in the same size too. So I think like if, if you have the same sex and same, um, around the same ages of children who are maybe around the same size, like this works for us, mm -hmm. but it took a while for me to get there. Yeah. Like in terms of not splitting up four things, but, um, so that works for them also. Like their clothes are all in the same areas, like pajamas and drawers, underwear in one drawer, socks in one drawer. And then same thing, dress pants, jeans, shirts hung up mm -hmm. and that works for them. So they, they have like a pretty good handle on that as well. And even though they're younger. Mm -hmm. And I think what's great about you is even though you have, you know, four boys and you can keep passing things down, you, you don't let it be an excuse for you to keep everything. Their closets are pretty, pretty mainstream. They, they're not, I don't feel like they're over, you don't have an overabundance of stuff in there that you're not using just because, you know, the older two pass it down. And I find that in a lot of houses, if there's somebody, you know, kids that are older and they pass on hand-me-downs, that last kid or last two kids has way <laughs> too many clothes so that they much. may not even want to wear. But since they were free or somebody gave it to them, they keep it. Yeah. So I can I can see how that would easily happen to you. But it's been you. You have mastered the point of having four little boys. You've kept your house pretty simplified. Yeah, and I do try to keep their clothes simplified. Like the one thing I have hung on to is their suits and dress clothes mm -hmm. because I feel like even if a friend needs to borrow a tuxedo for a two year old, I have it. Mm -hmm. And those shoes, like I can lend that out mm -hmm. more easily. But everything else, um, if I don't like it, even if it's a gift, and I, I don't like to say that, but even if it's something like I wouldn't necessarily put on the kids or I'll let them wear it one time and then. Um, if it's not even something they love to wear, like you have to recognize that. So I kind of look at, okay, what are they doing every day? They're going to school. Like mm -hmm. they're putting on the same types of things every single day. They're going to their sports activities. So I look at that and base that when going through their clothes, like what are they wearing the most? I mean, we're doing laundry every day, mm -hmm. so I can recognize what they're wearing the most and, I really feel like simplifying the clothes is, is a, ta I mean, it's a huge task, especially for multiple children. And, but I think, um, the two and two sharing clothes makes that easier. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cause you could have so much more laundry. I mean, you're trying to keep it down to the, the necessities, not all yeah. the ones. And we all know what little, you know, boys particularly do. I know my son, you know, not as great at putting, you know, 
the stuff on the floor that's still clean away. It's mostly goes yes. right to the laundry room. Yeah. 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 Say, remember what we said that this was, you know, you wore these p- pajamas one time, you yeah. need another use yeah. out of them because the laundry never ends. But, um, so what do you do with like the toys when they finally outgrow the toys or the toys that they're not really using? Because you could have toys in every square inch of your house. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I do, we do go, we have a finished basement, which is wonderful. And I don't really have many toys on our first floor or in their bedrooms. Like I said, in their closet, they have their Legos and, um, but I really make an effort for them not to be bringing toys all through the house. Like since our basement is finished, that is where they keep them in the closet. And there's, there's like a good, um, balance with the toys. I feel like we keep things that they're playing with. Like there's a section for board games and puzzles. And then, um, there's like a section for sports, but anything they're not really using anymore. I do give away or sell. Mm -hmm. And yes, there, sometimes there's an emotional attachment like, Oh, they played with this, you know, as a baby, but I will tend to give those to, um, friends who, have a little baby that I know are going to enjoy. Like yeah. our Thomas, the train table, we had given it to the older boys when they were two and three. And just recently I did part with that mm-hmm. and all the Thomas, the train toys. And although it was, ki- it was kind of bittersweet, but I know that like another little boy who's two is mm-hmm. playing with it and he's, it's bringing him a lot of joy. And so right. that's what made me feel content with that is just to know that somebody else is getting use out of it when it was just sitting in our basement. Yeah. And I think that's a great point is if when we're done using something or loving something, why not pass it out into the world? Oh the yeah. Next and I had person. these cute, um, cute striped sweaters, like orange and blue. And, um, my friend who has twin boys grabbed them up. Like I had a whole pile of boy clothes for all my friends. I sent like a mass, you know, email out mm-hmm. and just said anyone who wants boys clothes from the age birth to five years old, you know, I have this available for you. So my one friend with twin boys just sent me a picture on Thanksgiving. The boys had the sweaters on Aww. and they looked adorable. And you know what? That brings me joy too, yeah. to know that, all right, my, those sweaters are not sitting in a bin anymore, collecting mm-hmm. dust and doing nothing. Like somebody is getting use out of what we once loved and now they can yeah. love it too. And it's just feels good to give rather than to hang on to because I mean, and you, I know you're a woman of faith as well. And I, I'm sure it comes into play as far as having an open hand is when you're done with something to give it out to somebody else that needs it rather than hanging it on, hanging on to it, putting it in a bin in the back of the basement on a shelf. And then you pull it out 30 years later and it's not in good shape. No. And somebody could have been using that. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, is that what is your, you know, on your mind when you're thinking about giving to somebody that might use it? Oh yeah. I think for me, it gives me more joy to give than receive. And I think that's something that, um, I pride myself on is always try trying to lend out. Like even when I said, okay, I do save these suits and tuxedos because maybe my kids wore them once or twice. So I know that I can help out a friend in need. So they don't have to go buy a tux or for one occasion, for one occasion, like <laughs> yeah. a wedding or yeah. that special yep. picture they want. Or so I, when my friends all came and picked up toys and clothes and, um, some other little, you know, stuff I had given away, it made me feel really good. And I know that, you know, they're getting use out of it. And also like donating to less fortunate. Like if we do have something extra, that we donate to church or, um, every year the kids school does a t-shirt drive to Nicaragua. So we have like a bin of t-shirts that we save all year long, including my husband and I too. And Mm so by the time we donate the t-shirts, it's probably like two big bags. Yeah. And so that, I mean, that feels good as well to just be able to give to less fortunate. And I also do, um, donate, close to the St. Luke's mission. And it, I mean, it really feels good to know that it's going somewhere and necessarily I'm not making the money I spent on it, but in the long run, 
doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. It just matters that someone else is utilizing your goods because it's just a, it's just stuff. Yeah. And so stuff it, really doesn't matter. I no, mean, it really doesn't matter. When we think us. about the stuff <laughs> that we've spent money on, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. So, no. and the best part is you're teaching your kids to let go easily and to give. Yeah. I mean, that is a huge, huge lesson. So, you know, the boys aren't seeing mommy hoard everything in the basement. No. The bin. They're seeing mommy and daddy give it to other people and give it willingly and joyfully. And I think that's really huge. So almost every Sunday at church, we see this one family and their little boy is, um, he's three years old and almost every single week he has one of my kids old shirts on, mm -hmm. which they're not old. I mean, I kept everything in pretty good condition, but the kids will be like, Hey, I remember when I wore that, yep. Hey, that was my shirt, you know? And so they, they see it on him and yep. it's, it's adorable. It's really cute to see that, you know, someone else is wearing and using, like I said, things that are just sitting in bins. Yeah. It's, and it's awesome because I, I truly believe that when you give with an open heart, it comes back anyways. To oh, it full. comes back so much. More. So many, so many bigger blessings than yes. keeping things all tucked away. I mean, yeah. you can do so much good with all those things that we have. And especially with kids, toys and clothes, they're, they now, they don't use them very long anyway. So no. it's a very short period of time. And yes, it does cost money, but you know what? Pass it on. And I'm sure it will come back to you tenfold. Yeah. So what, um, as far as like the transformation that you've made as you've, your family has grown and your house has just um, gotten to a point where I know you've worked super hard to keep it simple. How does that benefit you that you have let go of so much stuff and have gotten to the point where you're just keeping the things that your family loves and uses? It makes life as a whole so much easier and better because like I said, this is just stuff in our lives. And when, when your mind and your body and your your surroundings are cluttered with stuff, like you will walk in your door from the day and just be overwhelmed by it. And that creates anxiety and it creates just this feeling of overwhelming, like, Oh, I need to clean this out or I need to clean it out. But getting rid of the stuff that doesn't matter. Um, it just creates like a better sense of being all around. I feel like when I get home now, I'm not worried about clearing out the clutter I, now I know like there's a place for everything. If there's not like we either find a place for it if it's important. And if not, then we get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And these things that aren't important, it's just much easier to recognize and say, Hey, are we using this? Are we, do we need it? Mm -hmm. Could someone else benefit from this more than us? And so I feel like it's just made life so much easier and our house feels more like a home. It's cozier. It's, it's nicer. And at night, like I can go to bed knowing that, you yeah. know, our house is uh, more comfortable because of that. And it's easier to maintain this way. Much easier to maintain. Yeah. yeah. And easier for the kids to help you, right? Because they know where things go. Yes. And yeah. if you say, okay, put the Legos away in the bins, there's not <laughs> 10 other categories in the Legos. No, they know that. So they, they know where everything to, goes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what's so amazing is like when you think about it, you're raising four future husbands. Like these little boys are going to be somebody's husband someday. And the fact that you're having, having them learn the skill of organizing, giving, being a team player, helping out in the house. I mean, that's huge yeah. when they're on their own. It is huge. When you think of, you know, you're raising a human that's going to go out into the world on their own at some point, And I would like to have them like if they have their own house, know how to keep it organized, know where to put things mm -hmm. and because that extra stuff and clutter will only create that anxiety that hopefully, you know, they won't have as right. an adult right. because of that. If this is one thing like I can help them with in life, I feel like that's um that's a beneficial It's so aspect. huge. I can't tell you how many people have told me over the years, nobody ever taught me how to do this. They literally were not taught. And if, you know, if the parents that are listening right now don't know how to do it, they can easily find someone to help them 
get that get to yeah, that get point. to the point yeah, yeah because yeah. it doesn't come naturally or easily for everybody and it no. is a process I agree with but that. we can all learn as we go just like you learn other things and then you pass it on to your child when mm-hmm. you feel like you've got a handle on it and especially just by being an example I mean a lot of times our kids are just picking up things by watching us how we live mm-hmm. our lifestyle so um I think that's really awesome and I have to ask you I mean have you ever regretted anything that you've given away have you ever um, wished you had it? Or have you said, man, I really wish I would have kept those blue and orange sweaters? <laughs> no, no, because it made me so happy to yeah. see these two little boys in them on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I mean, that brought me joy when I got the picture. It was like, oh, adorable. I mean, so it really does bring me joy. The one thing I kind of, I was like, ah, oh, was our high chair because we had like an old, not an old fashioned high chair, but before. The, um, what are the ones called that you just set on the chair and booster seats? But yeah. Like the booster seats before that, like people actually bought high chairs yeah. and, um, we had used that for all the babies, but that's the only thing I felt a little sad about, but now I don't care. Yeah. I'm like, it's so funny because little... people will be afraid to part with something in the moment, but you really no. And you look back on. and half the stuff you don't even remember. Yeah. I mean, it's just, once you do it, it does feel good and it, it takes that like weight off your shoulders and mm-hmm. just to get rid of things. And like I said, it's just stuff, it's just yeah. stuff that causes all this extra so baggage, not worth it. baggage for people. So not worth it. And you know, it's just the, le- the more stuff we own, the more time it takes to maintain it. And we really need as much time, extra time as we can possibly get to be a mom and to spend time with our kids before they're, you know, they're grown. I know. The house. It goes so fast. so fast. So it's so much better to just be able to come home Know where everything goes, a quick pickup, simple, easy, and then be able yeah, to Yeah, and it's time easier to, to clean up at kids. night um, yep. after dinner. It's much easier to clean up from what what they have going on. It's easier to clean up when they get home from school. Although, some, you know, some days they get home and <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, a bomb of like backpacks and shoes and <laughs> coats course. and hats and gloves just went off. But, yeah. you know, we have a spot for all of that. So it's easier to deal with. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much, Angela, thank you, for being Jennifer. here today. I know this has been such a um, strong process for you and a journey you've walked through, and I really think that everything that you shared today can be, and you know, you can influence and motivate other moms that maybe are starting to feel like the clutter is taking over their house, and you know, to just be able to have another mom say, you know what, it's so not worth it. Just simplify and embrace the time we have our, with our kids. I think is a very powerful yeah. message. Yep, yeah. and. I feel like once you do it, I mean, you just, that weight off your shoulders is just lifted. And I want to share that with other moms and for them to know that feeling mm-hmm. once you get, once you do get organized and in order so because it. it's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. And there, thanks for everybody um, listening today. We'll be back soon.